Hi there, and thanks for joining me at the Financial Spotlight. I'm Chantrell, and I'm here to give you financial tips and tricks as you go on your road to know your money better. So it is almost tax time, and I know a lot of people are dreading it. They don't know what's going to happen next year uh, during this new tax season, but I am here to just give you some information on what you will need to have ready and readily available for your tax preparer, or if you decide to go online and pay and do your taxes through an online provider, everything that you need to have to be ready to prepare your taxes. So I'm going to go through a list. I have a list here. I'm going to have to look down occasionally and refer to it so I can remind you of what you need. Um, depending on who you are, but I definitely want you to um, have a pen and paper available so that you can write these things down depending on who you are. So let's start with an individual. If you're just an individual and you work for a company or you uh, get receive a W-2 for your work, then that means that you are an individual or you're an employee. If you're an employee, the things that you need to prepare your taxes, if you're single or if you have children or if you are married, these are the things that you need to prepare your taxes. So the first thing you need, of course, is your W-2. Make sure that you have W-2s from all of your employers for the year. I've had so many clients and they'll, they'll have two or three of their W-2s and they've worked five or six jobs and then they're still waiting for W-2s from their other comp for the other companies. They have to give you your W-2 by a certain time every year. So make sure that they get your W-2 to you during that time, make sure that your address is updated. Make sure that they have everything on file for you, email address, however they're gonna communicate with you. Make sure you contact your human resources department or your payroll department and just let them know or find out what your information is on file with them so that they can update it and you can get your W-2 on time. The other things that you will need to prepare your own taxes or to give to your tax preparer would be a 1099G. Now that is if you received unemployment this year. So, or in the tax, the tax year that you're filing for. So if you received unemployment or you received a state refund, make sure that you have your 1099G with you so that you can give that to them. You will also need a, if you get retirement, if you receive dividends, if you have any investments, if you got any interest from anything, you will need a 1099R, 1099DIV, which is dividend or 1099 interest. These are all forms of income and you definitely need to report them because if not, if you report it, the IRS will stop your tax return from going through and then you will have to pro provide that information or they'll just let you know, hey, we have this on file for you or we know that you got income from this. It could be as little as $12 for, of interest. You got an interest income from this. You need to report it. So make sure you have all of those documents. Please don't go to your tax preparer and like, can you just use my, um, my last paycheck? So, I mean, we can do that <laughs> to just like estimate and tell you what you can do, what you would get. But it's more beneficial for you to have all of the documentation because what if you didn't get your if what if you did get retirement or you cashed out some money out of your uh, retirement fund and you didn't provide a 1099R now you have to pay money back plus interest and penalties on the income that you received or the money that you received and you didn't report. Next, if you own a home and uh, you need to claim it on your taxes, you need to make sure that you have a 1098 that is going to record or record all of the um, information that you, or the, all of the money that you pay uh, in interest to your mortgage company. In addition, they should provide you well, sometimes they'll provide you with the real estate taxes that you paid for the year. If they don't, your county has those documentations and they should mail those to you to let you know what you paid in real estate taxes for the year. Also, if you attended school or if your child attended school and you claim your child on your uh, taxes, 
you will receive or you need to have your 1098T. 1098T is showing what tuition you paid, what scholarships uh, they received, et cetera, et cetera. So the next thing you also need to have is if you made donations to the Salvation Army or any place like that, make sure you have your donation receipts. Make sure you have the dates on there, the amount that you donated, um, the items that you donated so that you can easily put those in and know exactly what it is that you donated and how much it was worth. And that is um, leads me to the next thing is, uh, is the... If you have stocks and bonds that you're selling or buying and you receive a 1099B, make sure you provide that to your real estate, um, real estate, to your tax preparer or your tax accountant. And if you have any debts forgiven, say you had a credit card and you couldn't pay it off, but, or you pay part of it and the other part, the company decided, okay, we'll let that go. Um, we'll go ahead and forgive that amount of debt. Well, they're, the, nine times out of 10, they'll send you a 1099C, which means that they have forgiven the debt and you need to report that on your taxes as well. And of course, you need to make sure that you have your medical verification information, whatever form that is that you have for verifying that you received medical through the year, you need to have that as well. Also, if you purchased a home, you should provide your uh, tax preparer with a copy of your HUD-1. And that is the long form that you sign and fill out and everything when you first purchase a home. That will be beneficial for you uh, in the long run. So go ahead and get that to your tax preparer. And also, if you sold a home, you need that information as well so that we can determine if you owe any taxes on any amount of the sale, um, any amount of the money that you got from the sale. Now, let's move on to if you are self-employed. No, let's go to contractor. I'm sorry. A contractor or a consultant is a person that maybe you work for yourself or you've worked for a company, but you're not necessarily an employee of theirs. Um, they would pay you on what is called a 1099 miscellaneous. Um, that is something that you would receive from them in the mail, or they can give it to you uh, exactly when you finish the job. And they could fill that out and say, okay, you finished your job. This is how much I paid you, et cetera, et cetera. This is information that you need to report your income. Um, and in addition to all of the other forms that I talked about in the individual section, this 1099 miscellaneous will be your income verification. And sometimes you will have to pay taxes on that income that you received. It all depends on what deductions you might have had. Um, you need to make sure that you have receipts for all of your reductions. If you m drove any miles with those people, you need to make sure, or for those people, you like if you're a, a notary or if you might be a loan signing agent or something like that and you had to drive to different locations to perform your job, you make sure that you keep a running record of all of your miles that you drive in reference to that job, make sure you keep it on a calendar. It's very important that you have a paper trail because you do not want to be audited. And then they come to you and like, okay, well, why did you put down that you drove 20 miles on such and such a date on December 20th? Well, um, cause that's what my things, my, my speedometer read. Oh, no. Well, we need to know that needs to be written down. So you can either write it down. Some people use a mileage tracker or um, an app on their phones also to track their mileage. So that so you have you can do that either way. Um, I but I do encourage you to make sure that you keep a record of any miles driven that you're going to try to write off on your taxes. So that's what you would need to do or use as a contractor or a consultant. Those are the things that you need in order to prepare your taxes. Now, finally, let's get to the self-employed. That could be, you could be a sole proprietor. You could be considered an LLC. Um, these are the things that you will need to be able to prepare your taxes. Now, 
I suggest that you also contact your tax preparer or your tax accountant or whoever it is, or even if you're doing it yourself, make sure that uh, they tell you what is specific for your state. Because in some states, there's other forms or other things that you need to turn in every year um, in order to make sure that you're compliant with not just the IRS, but also with the state taxes. Like for California, there is other documentation that has to be turned in. In addition to your state taxes, there's another form that you have to turn in to report your uh, income from your business if you're an LLC. So it is important that you ask them what other forms or what are the documentations that I need to be able to make sure that I am in compliance with all tax requ requests or requirements for our state. They can tell you. So, <laughs> and, and if they if they can't, make sure you go ahead and you can always ask me. You can leave a comment in the comment section below and ask me, or you can email me privately at contact at the financial spotlight.com. I will definitely respond and tell you whatever it is that you need to have for your particular state. You can just say, hey, Chantrell, I have an LLC in, I don't know, Michigan um, or whatever. I need to know exactly what it is that or what forms I need to make sure that I am compliant with my state. Okay. I don't have a problem with doing that. Okay, so for self-employed, you can possibly get a 1099 miscellaneous from the people that you do work for, and sometimes you won't because you're self-employed. You don't always get a 1099, right? But definitely have all of your bank statements or your bank information for your business account in order so that you can say, okay, I made... $200 on January 1st. I made $300 on January 2nd, et cetera, et cetera. You have that running total and you know exactly what income you need to put down for your total income that, that you have for the year. You have to title, you know, add it all up and know what you made for the year. A lot of times, most banks um, and PayPal and all those and Square and all those are good with having your monthly total at the bottom every month. Sometimes PayPal will even have, you know, the total for the year. So it depends on, you know, what you're working with, what kind of bank that you're using. Uh, you need to keep track of every dime that you're bringing in for the services or the products that you are selling. That is what is important. You have to, you need to have a bookkeeper or an accountant, or you need to have great books and keep those books in order so that you make sure that you're ready for tax time. Okay. Now, in addition to those books, sometimes like Lyft drivers, Uber drivers, um, uh, I can't think of the other companies that have drivers. Um, oh, like when you do Uber Eats and all those, sometimes they'll give you, depending on how much money you made for the year, etc. you'll get a K1. Uh, sometimes they'll send, give you a 1099 miscellaneous. It all depends. So make sure that you have that documentation and that you're reporting that income. And then of course, like I said before, just like with the individual, you will still have those forms if necessary. If you have, uh, if you got unemployment, if you have uh, any interests or retirement income, any of that type of thing, you need those documentations, document documents as well and that documentation as well those documents as well and you need to have your like i said the, the running information about your income you need to make sure that you have all of that in order and then of course for your deductions make sure that you have your deductions your receipts for your deductions um you're keeping track of your mileage you're keeping track of track of every expense that you have so that when it comes time to do your taxes, there's no questions. You know exactly what you're reporting. You're reporting this amount as income. You're reporting these amounts as expenses, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know how much you have to pay in self-employment taxes and you will make sure that you um, report everything properly. Now, let me give you a little tidbit of information. And this is like, um, what do you call it? A golden nugget. 
Um, I've had some clients uh, that have had businesses uh, and I still have them. They will, um, how can I say this? I want to sound right. I don't want to, they will try to deduct as much as possible so that they have um, pay no taxes, low taxes, they're even kill, et cetera. Okay, I understand that. I, I totally understand you want to not pay taxes or pay, you know, be like the, the, the people that are saying, oh, I didn't pay taxes or whatever. But my little tidbit of advice is if you plan to purchase a home, a building, a vehicle for your business, a uh, boat, I don't know. Uh, what if you want to eventually have a warehouse or you're trying to purchase um, anything? If you're trying to purchase anything for your business or for yourself or whatever, you do not want to go into that bank or those loan places, wherever you're going to get the loan from and bring them or, or they order your uh, form, your, your, your IRS form, transactions form, and they see, I mean, transcripts, they order your IRS transcripts and then they see zero income or they see, um, you know, $500 in income, but $10,000 in expenses for your business. You don't want that. And I'm saying that to say, you want to make sure that when you go in there, you're showing, hey, I'm a reputable business. I'm making money. I'm doing the right things. I'm on the right track. Now I need you to help me out. I need you to give me some money so I can go buy this. I need you to invest in this. I need you to you know, give me more money to expand my business because I am lucrative. I am making money. I am in the, in the black, not in the red, you know, or I am, you know, I'm doing a good thing. I'm, I'm having positive, um, outcomes from my business financially. So I say all that to say, just keep in mind when you're doing your taxes as a, a self-employed person or a person with a business, et cetera, keep in mind that in the long run, yeah, right now it might be good to get those, those extra deductions, et cetera. But in the long run, you're going to want to be able to say, okay, you know, I've, I've made this amount of money with my business. Now, if there's an issue with paying taxes on the money that you made from your business, guess what? Then you need to start making a tax plan and I can help you with that. Go ahead and contact me at my email address, contact at the financial spotlight, um, dot com, because you need a tax plan. Your tax plan or your tax strategy should include how you're going to pay these amount of taxes at these certain times. You should not be um, either making all this money and paying all these taxes or making no money and paying no taxes, there should be some type of way, um, unless that's what you want to do. Okay. I'm not here to tell you how to run your business. I'm just saying from a financial aspect, you want to make sure that you have leverage when you go in there to ask for money and, you want them to give you a loan to buy or invest or get whatever it is that you want to get. Now, if you don't need anybody to invest or you don't need any money coming in or whatever the case may be, fine. Do not take my advice. That is, that is up to you. That is what you want to do. Um, the same goes for individuals. Try not to, you know, say, okay, I'm, you know, these are the things that I have, gotten off and, and I'm, well, it's not easy for you to do that anymore, but, um, to reduce your income down so low where now, why would I want to loan to you if at the end of the year, your income was $12,000 and you didn't make any, you know, I'm not saying that's a bad amount, but I'm just saying at the end of the year, it said a hundred thousand, 
your income ended up being twelve thousand. So your expenses are a little high, <laughs> you know. So I'm just I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to give you some advice, some information that you know came to me, and I was like, you know what, I need to tell people this, and I tell my clients as well. And if you have any questions about this, go ahead and leave a comment. If you disagree with me, leave a comment. Um, if you agree with me, leave a comment. And if you have questions and you don't want to leave a comment, like I said, you can reach me at contact at the financial spotlight.com. I do respond to those emails. And, and if you need that help, go ahead and contact me. I will definitely get you the information as soon as possible. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope this information helped you. If it did, go ahead and share it with your friends and family. Make sure that you like it so that you that uh, YouTube knows that you like it and I know that you like it. And also um, join the Financial Spotlight family so that you can get more information like this every single week. And of course, Click that notification bell because then you'll know exactly what I'm going to post here and I'm going to share more financial tips and tricks with you every single week here at the Financial Spotlight. Thanks for joining me. Have a good one.